coming from different ends. Uh, uh, some people at NCOC were thinking about it, uh, people in King were thinking about it, and also Sami in Adrao section, he was also a very proactive in uh, establish, establishing a section here. So he contributed to promoting uh, King to sign up uh, for SP uh, and uh, working on opening SP section. So he is a great supporter of SP Astana section, very good friend of ours. And now I'm going to read actual official description who Sammy Macri is. Uh, so, Sammy is currently working as a uh, production engineering advisor and he was seconded from Chevron Australia to Tengi Chevroil. And now he's an advisor for future growth project at the Reservoir Management Group. Uh, Sammy uh, worked uh, as a chief reservoir engineer before Chevron in IPR group of companies, a Dallas-based company. Uh, then he worked with GAPCO for eight years. That's the biggest Egyptian joint venture with Amoka and then BP. And three years with uh, DCS Schlumberger as a part-time consultant. Uh, uh, Mr. Macri is actually Dr. Macri. He was a production department head and petroleum engineering professor in Egyptian Petroleum Research Institute. Sami got his petroleum engineering degree with honors in 1981 from Cairo University where he was appointed as an instructor and for two years he was working at the engineering math and physics department. Dr. Macri has a Master of Science degree in, uh, that he graduated uh, in 1985 and PhD in 1988 uh, in petroleum engineering from Azerbaijan Institute of Oil and Chemistry. So he speaks Russian and he understands it perfectly. <laughs> Uh, so he has served uh, in SP Egypt, uh, West Australia, in Atro sections in almost all positions and right now he is uh, Atro section chairman uh, in Atro, of course. Uh, he represented Egypt in uh, Middle East uh, SP Council, uh, participated in organizing several SP ATWs and conferences. He has published 15 SP papers. In 2006, Dr. Macri was awarded the Regional Technical Award for Reservoir Description and Dynamics in the Middle East. He became SP Distinguished Lecturer uh, for season 2007-2008. And last year, at the Rao section, chaired by him, uh, won two international and uh, four regional awards. And uh, his, uh, he actually came for the meeting. That was a preparation for the first Caspian conference in Astana. And you probably heard about uh, this conference that is coming to Astana and will be rotating between Baku and Astana. So since we knew that he was coming, we decided to use this opportunity and listen to his distinguished lecture that he was giving around the world uh, in different sections. And, and also, thank to the company where he works right now, Tengiz Chevroil, who are very grateful to sponsor this event. And they were very, uh, very supportive when we mentioned that we would like to use this opportunity. So please give a round of applause to Tengiz Chevroil and to Sammy Macri. And Sammy, the floor is yours. I do believe that the, the, the um, official language of our industry should be English. So that's why uh, I'm very unbiased and I'm very neutral in saying that. Because, yeah, actually, neither Russian or English are my native language. So. But still, this is the language of the industry. I do appreciate the, uh, the introduction. Uh, I became sweaty already with all of these good words. So thank you very much for that. And this again, you know, it's not about the distinct lecture here, but it's about SP. So SP is a wonderful world. But whenever you put, you know, a, a small, small part, or small effort or contribution, you will get entities, you know, in this case, entities. And I assure you that. And I love to introduce myself all the time like a, a godson of SP. 
uh, it's something that definitely even prestigious to belong to. So I urge everybody here who is not an SPE member to become already and join this fabulous international organization uh, that will add a lot to your knowledge and information and your career development. Uh, I think that we have one here, maybe even by to the computer. Thank you very much. <coughs> the Distinct Lecture Program is one of the very strong SPE contribution to the technical society. And uh, actually, it's one year term, uh, and then every year SPE changes the roster of the Distinct Lecture. But in case the topic is still valid, um, you will get it as uh, SPE Distinct Lecture. So actually, this is from the program of 2007, 2008. It was presented, I think, at least in 20 sections around the world. Uh, but still, the topic is very valid in the end. So what I'm going to share with you is very conceptual, by the way. Uh, and uh, many people here, I think, how, how many reservoir engineers we have here? Uh, but don't expect anything to hear about simulation and history management, okay? <laughs> so the past performance and the forecasting here has nothing to do with simulation. So please, go out of the box that you have, right? The temple that you built for yourself, and just, you know, let's, uh, let's go through uh, the, the, uh, uh, the presentation of today. So this is definitely what we see in all the distinct lectures, uh, uh, presentations. This is, should be the opening slide for what I will present. <clears throat> and here, because we, we, we have to be very loyal in our industry, so that's why I mentioned actually the company that I worked with while going through this very tough filters of SPE to recognize you as a distinguished lecturer international, right? Uh, and then after getting it, I, I left them to Chevron. And then Chevron Australia actually sponsored all of these uh, trips by 2000, 2008. Uh, but currently, as you can see, that I'm working with TCO. Uh, so it's very nice to have this uh, history uh, in whatever we present. So bridging over uncertainty, past performance, and forecasting, the, the, the message is very conceptual here. So we have huge, huge, huge volume of data and information, uh, and we still need more. We still need more, which is good. We are not against that. We are all talking about civilians. But the issue is, can we create more value out of what we have in hand? And the answer is yes. Definitely yes. So, good check. Yeah. And people in the back here, well, right, right. good, thanks. Uh, yeah, I don't need a mic, I know. <laughs> the perspective of my, uh, so, <laughs> so here, here we have two codes actually, which I did like that serves, you know, the, the, the message that I'm going to convey, which is we always do, we always make decisions, and the decisions have a sort of risk, right? So it depends upon you whether you would like to make these decisions or you would like to stay in your corner and feel you know, comfortable that I'm not going to risk anything. Кто и шампанское не пьет, да? Иногда говорят, кто не рискует, кто не выигрывает. So risk is part of our industry, but you have to understand what's the tolerance that you can accommodate as a risk taker, right? It's quite different if you have a decision when you are single and the same decision when you have a family, right? Correct? Different things. So, and the second is, Definitely, as I said, that how much can you tolerate? Uh, can you tolerate something like, you know, 20 parts per million HOS? Or well, you can't. 10 parts per million to or you really can. So this is very important to understand, and this will frame your decision. So this is the outline of, this is just, you know, just a, a quick quote uh, about uh, something to help you understand my uh, message today. So we are, we are going to talk about risk versus uncertainty, uh, probabilistic approach, uh, different tools, and what's past and what's, what's forecasting. So this very simple definition, many, many of you will accept it and others will not, but again, take it you know, just as, as an opening, we can say, uh, idea about how to differentiate between. If you are going to play or gamble, right, just to kill time, without showing money on the table, Yes, there is uncertainty. You are going to lose, you are going to win, it doesn't matter, right? But if you are going already to put money on this, so this definitely will be a risk. And this risk is coming from the fact that some of the outcomes of the game may hurt you. Is that correct? You got it? Easy, right? And the difference between uncertainty, yes, it's money. And this is definitely our industry, right? It's all about the dollar sign. 
The other thing is the probabilistic approach. Definitely, we are dealing now even with more and more complex systems, right? Regarding the subsurface characterization, regarding the well design and construction, the facilities, uh, Arctic, you know, deep water, uh, remote areas, right? Lots of these things, and definitely the more the complexity, definitely this would be the deeper of our uncertainty and not understanding the system. So you have to think of how can I frame what are the outcomes of throwing the deck? Right? It's not easy if you have one deck, it's one from six, right? If you have two decks, it's from two to twelve. But here in this complex system, there is no end of these outcomes. Your inspiration and understanding of how you can put these outcomes will define the success of your project. So we have different disciplines that are sometimes confronting with each other. How many GNG guys here? Oh, you're welcome, okay. <laughs> it's good. You know what, in respect to the fact that we are cousins, but we have a lot of confronting issues. You guys, whenever you deal with, with data, you would take this data and make kick off. Engineers thinking the other way. Data for us is constraining factor. You have to dream of this, okay? Sometimes you take us to flashes, it's not okay, no worries. Yeah, but, but we as engineers, our thinking is the data is constraining. I can't dream if I have this range of values. You understand that? This is the way we think as engineers. So, so this year the geoscientists and here are the engineers. And sometimes we think deep and deep and deep to understand more about our projects, and this is definitely can take us even to the, uh, you know, a sort of backfire from the project. If we pay a lot of time to understand, and there's no way to get this understanding to the So, uh, there's another a quote here, which is, you know, the more an ENP, exploration production company, will, you know, facilitate the, the workflow and probabilistic approach, the more the success will be for this company. So this is uh, uh, an open invitation today for whoever is working with whatever to utilize the probabilistic approach, and there is no excuse for it. Don't tell me about anything rather than, for example, one platform or two platforms. This is definitely not under the probabilistic approach, right? But the number of the wells, you know, the production rates, the costs, the risks, you know, the prosody, the probability, whatever you would like to go, uh, this can fit good under probabilistic approach. So here's the, again a, 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 a sort of you know a, a, a cartoon to, to explain again what we are doing sometimes. So the conventional uh, technique is to go to go to go to go all paying time and, and, and money in order to come to a very deterministic approach. So our reserves are going. Uh, I, I, I wonder sometimes you see presentations and people are saying something. You know what? The incremental production rate is seven thousand. 332 barrels a day, <coughs> right? It's, 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 it's a joke, right? So, sorry guys, don't go, go and put these things in your presentations, right? These, these numbers have no meaning if you put it that way. But if you go and put it as a range, the increment will be from 7,000 to 7,500. This makes, it makes sense. <coughs> so my, 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 uh, my take here is, uh, please, don't, don't pay a lot of time and money in order to, cut, to, to come to this point, but cut the project here to get the P10, P90, and then take all of these resources for other projects of your portfolio. <coughs> Monte Carlo simulation, definitely, I think everybody knows about it, and this is already in the, in the heart of the probabilistic approach, and it's easily that you, you are having you know, a population of what? 100 points of growth from poor analysis, for example, right? It's still a small <coughs> sample of a big population. Monte Carlo offers you to go and take this 100 and they make it already 10,000, right? By creating the random numbers. So it's easy to do this. And you will find, you know, a quote from me by the end of the presentation focusing on the, the, the facts that we, we need to, to go and work with this. And I'll show you examples here that you may never thought of what that the probabilistic approach of Monte Carlo uh, can help them. 
So what we are trying to get the industry into uh, in order to resolve this issue and to get value of the data and, and you know and utilize the probabilistic approach and all of that is this roadmap we can say. Uh, I'll, sh I'll show you some jokes now from our industry. Uh, just to explain how much do we need to unify our definition of thoughts. <coughs> this is a very uh, <laughs> this is a very interesting thing that uh, you know we have a, 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 a cumulative probability and the reverse cumulative probability, right? So the one is is, is grows from uh, from here to here is the cumulative, and the one that is reverse growing is the reverse cumulative. They are all the same, exactly the same, right? <coughs> And uh, this point is P10 and P90 according to what one you consider. And this one as well is P10, P90. The lesson here or the message here should be we are 80% certain that the value we are expecting of the reserves or whatever here is within 17 to 31. This is the message. 80% certain, right? And uh, that's why you will find in one project the service guys are saying that you know the the P10 of pressure is the most pessimistic, while the drillers are putting the P10 as the most optimistic for the rate to arrive, and we are lost in one company. You can see this, right? I'm not quite sure whether Shell still, can, you know, follow this or not. But Shell is considering something like 85 and 15, and whenever we have a sort of merge with uh, or a joint venture with Shell, we, we don't know exactly what one, what one to do. To, I don't know whether it's still or already you stop that, but anyhow. So this again, yeah, this again, uh, this again, you know, one, one thing that we need to unify in our industry, which is our understanding of certain, you know, uh, given uh, facts here. This is SPE paper, almost, you know, we can say old one, but it's very valid till now. So uh, this is from, from 2001, something like 13 years, and SPE did very nice, uh, uh, very nice uh, exercise. So they asked something like 12 vendors of the uh, of the petroleum economics, 12 vendors, petroleum economics software, and they gave them all the same exercise. So these are the value, these are the reserve, these are we can say the interest rate, these are the inflation rate. Everything is the same. And you can imagine that the 12 vendors of manufacturers of software came with this, you know, distribution for the net present value or this distribution of the internal rate of return. So you can find a company making something like 100% and the other is making it within 20, 30 or 40. The net present value is something like, you know, 100 here, that's maybe zero here. The same exercise, right? And that's why I, I, I just made the, it's not a joke, but it's from our industry and in the, in the uh, technical committee meeting. But if you will take one seismic line and they give it to two uh, geophysicists, how many interpretations would you expect? Yeah. Five. <laughs> five. <laughs> right. From, right. from so two to five. Person, but still, you, you are expecting a lot, right? So these are the things that we, we need to unify. Here. So uh, it's again, I'm not against you no know, different, uh, you can say, reading of things. But still, there are things that we have to agree to. So sensitivity analysis. <clears throat> Sometimes we uh, we plot things, and here is an example. Uh, this is the very famous plots that we receive from whatever core laboratories, right? Which is you know uh, permeability versus porosity. When I worked for core laboratories uh, for about five years, uh, it wasn't said in the uh, in the introduction, but yeah, this happened. I stopped core laboratories from putting a regression line. It's bad, you know. We are as if uh, enforcing people to follow something which is not correct. So even in making this sensitivity plots, we need to, to think whether definitely we are okay about that, or there is definitely a, a correlation between these two naturally occurring parameters. And if there is, we need also to go and make a sort of, maybe we need to drop here something like three lines, four lines, right? just immediately. Again, there is a work characterization and uh, 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 how we call that? And, uh, have something that's uh, uh, fascist. Fascist is one of, one of the internal hidden gears that, that drive this. The PRTs? 
Uh, it will come to my mind, sorry. It will come to my mind. So this one thing that definitely, if you would like to design a sensitivity analysis, this was good. This uh, is, 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 I think everybody of us, especially those of my age, uh, 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 has went through uh, oil fields that already about have 100% recovery factor. True, right? True. Like so, there is no way to have this. There is no way. People have to go back, even not waiting until the 100%. If it goes already 40 or 50, it's too much. In respect to whatever you do, it's too much. So you have to go back and evaluate this. And those guys came to 100% recovery factor. So they went and checked all the size of lines, it's okay. They went and checked the thickness, it's okay. They went and checked the area, it's okay. The porosity is okay. So it appears that we have something bad with the, the saturation. And the key to the saturation is what? Is the resistivity. So what they did is to drill a new well, especially to have core, design a coring program which is focusing on getting real resistivity, and then go back and calculate. So they in injected a sort of a tracer, right, into the coring fluid in order to understand how much did we, we can say, uh, invade the core. Because whenever you invade the core, you, you, know, you destroy the original saturation of water in it. <coughs> and then, after cutting the core, cleaning it, sorry, I'll, let me go back, cleaning it, and uh, get to this, we can say a relationship or a correlation, they determined already the resistivity of the, uh, of the water saturating the core, not the coring fluid. <coughs> from here, they go back and calculate from the logs and put a sort of new resistivity log, and they came to things like this. So you can see the water saturation, the water saturation, the process is almost the same from the new and from the old, but the water saturation comes much less. This is the old one, and this is the new one from the new core design. And of course, getting the saturation much more for water will compensate for higher volumes of water. Just an example. One more thing is, uh, this was uh, a work done upon something like eight years of mechanical bridge plug. Uh, eight years of performance. Mechanical, that's, again, this is the, the same, uh, the same message, right? So we have data, go ahead and, and, and take. Uh, <coughs> mechanical uh, bridge plugs, and uh, it appears that we have this triangle distribution, number of jobs per year, and this is the cost per job, log number distribution. So, okay, you have two distributions. Please go and define what's your P10 here, P90 here, P10 here, P90 here. If you multiply the two distributions, you will get another distribution that will tell you how much budget you may allocate for this sort of operations, right, for your company. Scientifically based, 100%. Right? Owners of the old data, 100%. But we just, we just are afraid from the distributions and the probabilistic approach. Diagnostic plots. You need to think out of the box. How I'm going to plot this versus this. Some people may go and plot this versus square of this. Or this after, you know, square of this. Whatever the problems, right? But sometimes we are, we are very contained. Have a look at this. I'll go, uh, it's a little bit tough to understand, but I'll try my best. This is called failure patterns. 77 wells that failed to approach uh, a cave, a reservoir, right? But the, the GNG guys, our very best friends and good relatives, they decided that, for example, this is the pre-drill critical risk. So, the source may become a reason for the failure in case of whatever, how many. The migration could be the case of failure and so on. <clears throat> then we drilled the 77 wells, and we did like to know whether our prediction our forecasting is correct. So this is already the actual. Okay, so let's pick the reservoir. Or, or let me go to something like this. So what, what is the meaning of this two? That the pre-drill critical risk for these two wells, whatever the number is, said that we may lose them because of source. And in draining them, they became failure because of reservoir. Right? So, if, if you'd like to see all of these wells were said to be failure 
because of different reasons, correct? But only eight of them were predicted properly. So as if we have eight wells <coughs> out of 28, we were good in predicting. So our chance of success in predicting properly is what? Something like 30%. This one. It's eight divided by 28. This is only the right number of the wells that we set from the beginning. It will be a reservoir issue, and definitely it became like reservoir issues. So it's 28. <clears throat> so if you go and calculate all of that, you will find that uh, we are very bad in predicting reservoir failure. If you go by all of these, the least is what? Reservoir failure. It appears that we don't read properly from the seismic the reservoir characteristics. You got the message? Why is that? What did you write, sir? Uh, actually, I don't know what the, uh, the format here for... Uh, what is the format? So you, people can put questions while... So we will probably let Sammy talk first, and then we're going to have a 10 15 minute Q&A session where you can ask Yes, yeah, I think this is the format, yeah. OK. So you just keep it till the end, please. <laughs> So, and so on. So here we were talking about, and this is really a big problem.